Now we will learn how intermolecular forces affect solubility and boiling point. First, we will consider how intermolecular forces affect solubility. Uh, the rule for solubility is like dissolves like. That, that means a polar solvent dissolves in a polar, uh, dissolves a polar solute. For example, HCl, a polar covalent compound, is soluble in the polar solvent water. Same way, sugar is an organic polar compound and it is soluble in water. And hydrogen bonding also helps a substance to dissolve. For example, alcohol is soluble in water because of two reasons. One, it is polar and the second one, it forms hydrogen bonding with water. Now, coming to non-polar compounds, a non-polar solvent dissolves in a non-polar non-polar solvent dissolves a non-polar solute. For example, toluene dissolves benzene, both are non -so organic non-polar compounds. Pentane dissolves in hexane. Benzene cannot dissolve in water because uh, one is polar, the other one is non-polar. So basically a substance is soluble, uh, a polar in a polar com uh, sub uh, substance, the non-polar in a non-polar and hydrogen bonding will also initiate solubility. Identify if the following is soluble in the solvent mentioned and the predominant reason for solubility. So the first uh, solute given is CH3OCH3, it's ether and solubility in water. It will be soluble because both water and uh, ether are polar. The next one, and dissolving ether in benzene, it will be insoluble because the solvent is non-polar but the solute is polar. Then I will take the uh, next one, again I am taking ether and dissolving it in acetone, CH3COCH3. It will be soluble because both of them will be polar. And uh, again, the CH3OCH3, I am dissolving in an organic solvent, CCL4, and we know that CCL4 is non-polar, and hence it will be insoluble. So, in the first set given, the solute is polar, and we try different solvents, uh, either if it will be polar or non-polar, depending, we found out whether it will be soluble or insoluble. Let's go to the second set. The first compound solute given is C2H5OH and water. It will be soluble. Uh, one reason is it can form hydrogen bonding. Both of them can form hydrogen bonding with each other. And it's also, both of them are polar. The next compound sugar, C, uh, it's glucose, C6H12O6. In the solvent C2H5OH, it will be soluble because both are polar. Then C2H6 and CCL4, both are non-polar and hence they will be soluble in each other. And uh, we have PCL5 and uh, C2H5OC2H5, diethyl ether. It will be insoluble because the solute is polar while the solvent is non-polar. Now let's see how intermolecular forces affects the boiling point. The first rule is boiling point increases with molar mass. So if the compound has a higher molar mass, it will have a higher uh, boiling point. And some of the examples given over there, you can see that C8H16 is heavier than C4HA, so it has a higher boiling point. Same way, in the group 7 uh, compounds, uh, the, uh, the compounds of group 7, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, you can see that as the molar mass increases, uh, the state also changes. Fluorine and chlorine are gases, whereas bromine and liquid are, uh, bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. The second reason which uh, governs the boiling point is polar compounds have higher boiling point than non-polar compounds. For e the example is HCl has a higher boiling point than chlorine. Though the molar mass of HCl is smaller than chlorine, because of it being polar, uh, HCl is a liquid and chlorine is a gas. Then the third point is boiling point. A very important reason for the increase in boiling point is hydrogen bonding. Water has unusual higher boiling point because of hydrogen bonding. Water and H2S. Both oxygen and sulfur belong to the same group, so should behave similarly. But water has a much higher boiling point as compared to H2S. And uh, you can see that water is a liquid and hydrogen sulfide is a gas. And the fourth reason which covers the boiling point is a straight chain isomer will have higher boiling point. For example, the two compounds given over there, 
CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3 and uh, both of them have 4 carbons and uh, 10 hydrogen, uh, hydrogens but the way they have arranged one is arranged in a straight chain the other one is in a branch chain so the straight chain compound in spite of having same molar mass as the branch chain one will have a higher boiling point Identify the compound with higher boiling point. You are given a combination of two compounds. You have to find out which will have a higher boiling point. The first combination is water and ammonia. Both of them form hydrogen bonding. Even though there are three hydrogens in nitrogen, water forms has more hydrogen bonds than ammonia and therefore water has a higher boiling point. Then we have water and ethyl alcohol C2H5OH. Both of them can form hydrogen bonding. But water has a higher boiling point because the number of hydrogen bondings in water is much larger as compared to C2H5OH. Then let's compare CF4 carbon tetrafluoride and CI4 carbon tetraiodide. In this case, because CI4 has a higher molar mass, will have a higher boiling uh, point. Then we have ammonia again a compound that forms hydrogen bonding and let's compare it with pcl3 pcl3 is polar but it cannot form hydrogen bonding and hence ammonia will have a higher boiling point because it can form hydrogen bonds and then we have hcl it's a polar compound and let's compare it with nacl a ionic compound whatever be the case an ionic compound will have a higher boiling point because the ionic bond is much stronger than any of these intermolecular forces and hence NaCl will have a higher boiling point. Then we will compare the inert gas neon with another inert gas krypton. So in this case we have to consider the molar mass and molar mass of Kr is larger or I can say the average atomic mass is larger and hence krypton is has a higher boiling point. Then we have CHCl3 and CH4. So between the two, CHCl3 has higher molar mass and also is polar, hence CHCl3 will have a higher boiling point. Arrange in the increasing order of boiling point. The first set given is HI, HCl, HVR, HF. So in that, HCl with the lowest, uh, um, uh, with the lesser molar mass will have the lowest boiling point. Then we have HBr and then comes HI. And so, so far the molar mass plays role. And but HO, because it can form hydrogen bonding, it will have the highest boiling point. So basically, we have in, uh, put it in the increasing order of molar mass from HCl to HI. But HO, because of hydrogen bonding, uh, is in the top of the list. The next one, fluorine, will have the lowest uh, boiling point because it is non-polar. Then we have PF3 because it is polar. Then comes HO because it can form hydrogen bonding. But hydrogen bonding is not as strong as an ionic bond. So sodium fluoride tops the list. So it will have the highest boiling point. So wherever, even if hydrogen bonding is there, it is the ionic bond which will have a, a will overwrite that and will be strong, have a higher boiling point. The next group of compounds, uh, C2H6, it's a non-polar compound and then comes CHCO, CH3. Though it is polar, it cannot form hydrogen bonding. Then the last one, ethyl alcohol, C2H5OH, has a hydrogen attached to the oxygen and hence it can form hydrogen bonding and that's why the order is given there so basically you must remember that uh, ionic compounds hydrogen bonding polar and non-polar this is the order in which generally uh, boiling point depends and sometimes the molar mass should also be considered